Here. I first met him when he was a teenager. At that time, my sons were into hip hop. Um, they had a group called uh, Maybe Singer or uh, Black or something. Oh, Blackless. Blackless or Blue Band. Right. <laughs> right. So, and, and, uh, Jelani was a young, up and coming poet. And to visit him in his basement, it seemed he put him out his lyrics there. Very impressive, very diligent. So from that day on, next thing I, I know, he's an on the radio, he's an MC, he's a father, and now he's an author. So I think that's it. That's it. Him in a nutshell. And in all these occupations, he has excelled, and even to the point that in this in this new book that he's put out. We have a very good recommendation from George and F. Clark, who is giving it a stellar recommendation here. So we I look forward to reading it and we look forward to many more books from Jalal. So So good night everybody. I'm not gonna use a mic for now because I think it's a little bit unnecessary. But um I'd like to thank everybody for reaching, coming on, being here, being a part of this. This is our third meeting that we're doing. And um, yeah, it's good that, you know, there's still heads out in Toronto, T that, that want to come and, and, and deal with reading, books, stories, storytelling. I think that's an amazing thing. I think it's a... Uh, uh, I know it's a big part of my culture. I think you know, for most people, that, if not everybody that is sitting here, you know, storytelling is a sacred part of our who and, and what we are. From Nazi stories when you're a kid, you know, even from the more mainstream stories, the Jack and the Jills and all these, all these people that that have populated our, our imagination as children growing up. All these ideas, storytelling is a way for us not just to pass, not just to pass, you know, tales, but also as a way for us to pass concepts. Oh, bad boy Anthony Taylor, sir. I can show you my ID, he answered, reaching into his pocket with exaggerated slowness, pulling out his passport. Yo, get out the doorway. A distinctly Canadian voice called out behind him, which was rapidly followed by, oh shoot, Sorry, officer. Sorry, soldier at arms. Bad boy turned to see a frightened looking man in a bright yellow shirt backing away apologetically. The policeman ignored the bumbling man and snatched away bad boy's passport, handing it to the soldier. That's a Palladian passport. You live here? The cop asked, sounding doubtful. I do now, sir. I'm a new citizen come to start a new life in the hardest parish. I've actually purchased a home which I'm anxious to see in the flesh for the first time, bad boy explained. Figuring that since he had nothing to hide, the best course was just to be as open as possible. The soldier handed him back his passport, looking unhappy to be doing so. I guess I always liked to write. When I was a kid, they told me that I used to scribble nonsense, pages and pages and pages of books, and really get people upset. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because of the waste. But um, yeah, I feel like I've always been writing, and um, the writing for me has been the piece of art that led to all the other types of art, you know, so writing led to me to music and writing led to me to acting and writing led me to even radio eventually. So, you know, piece by piece, writing has been probably at the root of, of who I am and what I am as an artist, you know. Where Eagles Crawl and Men Fly was really inspired by two things that happened at once. Um, the one thing was I was thinking about making a change in my life and doing something different. And the other thing was, I started to really, in, in a, I've always kind of paid attention to world news and politics and what was going on, but I started to feel it more. Even though I wasn't there, just certain events, just, I don't know, as you get older, maybe you get more sentimental, but certain things started to touch me in a different way. And I kind of wanted to 
get all of what well, I didn't even plan it, but everything that I'm going through tends to end up in the art, you know, so that's kind of what happened. And the book itself is about a man who wants to make a new start in life wants to change everything that he's done before. He's, uh, you know, he's been on the road, he's been in the foster care system, he's been in the street, and he knows that side of life, but he also knows there's more to life. And so he decides to just make a fresh start, leave his country and go to a new country and, and start everything over. And when he gets there, he finds that countries tend to have their own business going on. <laughs> and you know, it doesn't always have to do with what you were planning. So uh, there, he goes to a country that's in the midst of a bunch of political turmoil. And that's politics from the top right down to the streets. You know what I mean? And so he ends up there and has to work out who he's going to be, what he's going to do, and how he's going to survive in this place. And um, the background of it is fantasy slash sci-fi, so there's people with all kind of fun and exciting, you know, anatomies and powers and different things. But I'll, I'll leave people to read that and check that out. But the real, at, at its real aspect is a story of a man who wants something new and a country that's being forced into something new. First thing I'd say is be prepared. It's, it's, it's a long process. At least for me it was. Um, Maybe if you have your system down, you can get it to go a lot quicker. And if you have a lot of money, money speeds up everything. But <laughs> be prepared to do everything yourself. And once you're prepared to do everything yourself, you will find help along the way here and there. But you can't bank on it. If you're the publisher, that means that everything is on you. If you want the cover to come out the way you want it to, either you got to find the artist and pay them, or get a favor, or, you know what I mean? The, the, anything you can think of, the type of binding, the cover, editing, all of that has to be managed by you, overseen by you, and, and most of all, paid for by you. I'm so glad you asked that, because it gives me a chance to really pump my peoples. Uh, my brother, Color Brown, he did, uh, he drew this cover for me. And let me just uh, do this thing quick. So yeah, and when I say my brother, brother from another mother, but you know, really my brother, a good friend of mine, Color Brown, also a great singer, producer, barber, does everything and one of his talents is crazy artist. So he actually drew the cover for me. And then another artist friend of mine who was also amazing, goes by the name of Eclipse, out of Steel City, Hamilton. He did the design. Down to creating this font, which is a custom font that he made just for this, to fit the cover in the book. So uh, those brothers really came through. And like I said, when you're prepared to do it all yourself and find it all yourself, that's when the help comes. But only when, only when you're doing it all yourself.